Hello Bond fans and welcome once again. So naturally as a Bond fan I am of course very interested in any and all forms of James Bond merchandise but my favourite particular little uh uh, a niche of James Bond merchandise has to be toys of James Bond cars. Yes, Bond-related toy cars have been sold in many different incarnations over the years, but the particular set I became obsessed with was the one that Corgi released to tie in with the 40th anniversary of Bond and the release of Die Another Day. This set was incredible. A single vehicle was released for each of the official Bond films, and being a completist, I, of course, had to have them all. I recently dusted off the lot for a tinker, and uh, for the most part, I think this is a damn fine assortment of toys. Uh, some are better than others, of course, but let's take a closer look, shall we? First up is the teeny weeny itty bitty sunbeam alpine from Doctor No. I'm not exaggerating by the way, this thing is the knick-knack of this set. It's incredibly small. I've never seen a sunbeam alpine in real life, but are they really about half the size of proper cars? I mean, okay, uh, size aside, it's a pretty little thing to start off the collection, if not a bit boring. Like the film version, the toy has no extra features to speak of, which is a shame. I was rather hoping it would come with some dodgy rear projection. Uh, however, it's such a sweet, brightly coloured little thing, it's hard not to like this particular car. I wish it had cheeks so I could go and pinch them. Oh, this is the only car I somehow managed to acquire twice, by the way. One mint and never opened. Destined for the great eBay. Sadly, the model from From Russia With Love was not the Orient Express train, but rather the truck that Bond and Tanya used to escape Spectre agents. This is a cool addition to the set, as I'm fond of the vehicles that divert away from just being plain old cars. It's a shame that the thing didn't come with some flowers or a tiny little plastic Tanya that could be placed in the back. Maybe I should make one. Uh, there's a small but nice little feature with the back flap, and I like the Russian writing on the side of the doors. Overall, it's pretty great. For Goldfinger, Corgi chose to make a toy out of the most iconic vehicle in that film. I mean, there's only one choice for car for Goldfinger, right? I mean, the Aston Martin DB... Uh, 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 oh. Uh, oh, Goldfinger's Rolls Royce? Uh, yes, Thunderball got the DB5, so Goldfinger gets the Rolls. It's a perfectly acceptable model, if not a bit unremarkable. I recently saw the actual Rolls that was used in the film Goldfinger at the uh, Bond in Motion exhibit at Covent Garden, and that thing in real life is just incredible. This picture really doesn't do justice to just how massive the thing is. If the Sunbeam Alpine is the equivalent of Knick Knack, then the Rolls is definitely Jaws. Ah yes, the DB5, the most recognised Bond car, and the one that seems to find its way into pretty much any hand every Bond vehicle set. But how does this particular version fare? Well, visually it looks great. Some nice details, cool interior, the front grille looks very authentic, but... Come on, if you're going to make a toy of the DB5, it needs to have an ejector seat. I know that that feature wasn't used in Thunderball, so this car only gets the bullet screen as a gadget feature, but... Come on, Corgi! How could you miss that? But then again, there are already about a million ejector seat Corgi DB5s out there as it is. And it would take a hell of a lot more than that to do this beautiful little model a great disservice. Quibbles about the ejector seat aside, it is a terrific little model. You Only Live Twice, of course, features two iconic Bond vehicles, Little Nelly and Aki's Toyota. Uh, Corgi chose the latter for this set, and I'm glad they did, because this is one of my favourite cars in the set. Another tiny one, it makes a nice companion to the Sunbeam. Oh, it's like they're a husband and wife, no. Uh, it's such a quirky car anyway, the Toyota GT, and I like that someone else besides Bond has a gadget-laden car this early in the series. This one's boot opens, and some grenades slightly protrude when the button is pressed which is cool. One thing about this set is that none of the missiles actually fire from any of the vehicles. They all just pop out a little bit. I guess it's a good thing, otherwise I'd have been inevitably losing half the things down the back of some sofa. But at the same time, it would feel slightly more authentic if they did fire out a little bit. From Majesty's Secret Service, we have the DBS, one of my least favourite models here, but then the DBS is one of my least favourite Bond cars. Actually, I'm not even sure it deserves that dishonour, it's just so boring. But then, I suppose, as a model, it does what it should do, provide an accurate representation of the car from the film. It's just so damn ugly. That colour is awful, it's like the shade of dirty pond water. So let's move on to brighter things, the loud and audaciously coloured Mustang Mach 1 from Diamonds Are Forever. For some reason, Corgi decided to grant this model with 
doors that could be opened and closed, which is curious. Uh, a feature that would have allowed the vehicle to be displayed on its side would have been lovely, but as it is, this is another nifty little model. I really love the detail of the horse on the grill of the car. Uh, excellent addition to the set. Now on to another of my very favourite things in this set, the double-decker bus from Live and Let Die, with removable upper deck. What a great idea, you can now recreate one of the best moments in the movie in miniature form. The detail on the inside of this model is great, all the seats and the pole and the steps to the upper deck. Curiously, there's a bit of transparent plastic blocking the stairs to the lower deck, not quite sure why cheaper than removing it, maybe? Uh, I love the San Monique transport uh, sign and the insignia on the side of the thing. A uh, wonderful reproduction. My only qualm about this one is that I wish there was a way to better secure the top deck so it didn't slide off quite so easily. Perhaps a little latch or something or a feature that allows it to click into place. Uh, regardless, it is a super model. A quick return to the loud red American car, it's the AMC Hornet Hatchback, the car that did the magnificent corkscrew stunt from the man with the golden gun, and it's another entirely pleasant addition to this set. However, unlike its diamonds counterpart, this particular toy was not blessed with openable doors or any other discernible feature, leaving it as one of the more bland additions to the collection. Still, pretty colour. Fortunately, the next model is anything but bland. The wonderful Lotus Esprit is an obvious Bond vehicle choice to make into a toy, and despite discolouring slightly with age, this is a pretty sweet model. The feature is, of course, that sub-mode is initiated, and there's even a nice little missile present on the roof of the car, which I really like. In sub-mode, the thing looks absolutely awesome. Outside of sub-mode, I'm not entirely sure what it's supposed to be, it's not really a car, is it? It doesn't have any visible wheels. Um, okay, I shouldn't nitpick, because I know that this is not a premium set or anything, and to keep costs down, I'm sure Corgi couldn't pull out all the bells and whistles, and this is a great model, just only when kept in submarine mode. However, something that the bells and whistles were pulled out for, apparently, is the Moonraker 6 Shuttle. Love, 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 love this one. It looks great. An obvious choice to go for, I guess. I mean, in Moonraker, other than that, you've got, what, the gadget-laden gondola? Oh, man, I'd love a toy of that. Anyway, the shuttle is great. Curiously, you can open it up at the top to reveal a satellite? Not quite sure about that. I mean, it's a nice inclusion, don't get me wrong. I'm sure they could have just as easily not included it at all, but... Wouldn't it have made more sense to include one of Drax's lethal pods, or a little troop of soldiers in spacesuits? Regardless, love this one. Now, despite the Lotus Esprit Turbo being another featureless model, it's one of my absolute favourites in the set. It looks so good. The bronze metallic colour is really quite stunning, the marking detail is great, and I love that they plonked the skis on the roof of the car. I guess it makes sense to have it featureless when the only special ability it displays in the film is the ability to deliver capital punishment to anyone who might try to pinch Bond's cassette player. Openable doors make a welcome return to the Mercedes Saloon, another handsome looking addition, if a tad nondescript. I guess if you were playing with these things and were acting out a story, this one would make a good baddie car. It does have a villainous look to it. If I had one request for this one, though, it would have been that it not have any tyres, for obvious reasons. Maybe throw in a little bit of uh, railway track, just for, for good measure. Okay, I love that this thing was chosen as the vehicle for a view to kill. I mean, you could have picked the Rolls, you could have picked the Blimp, but no, the Renault Taxi is what the kids buying these things wanted, obviously, and by George Lazenby, we're gonna give them that. It's such another nifty, quirky little thing. Unfortunately, it doesn't split in two or anything, but it does have a feature, an openable boot! Ha! Take that, Lotus Esprit, we all know who's king of the car gadgets now, don't we? Okay, after a bit of a recess, we're back on with the Astons, with the V8 from Living Daylights. I might actually prefer this particular uh, toy to the DB5 in this set. It's so lovely, it has a great dark snowy grey colour, interior design is fab, grill is good, I like the roof. But this is easily one of the best gadgets in the set when you press the rear exhausts. Skis pop out from underneath the car. It's a seamless feature, it's so subtle that the car works perfectly in both modes, unlike the Lotus Esprit, which 
probably just had a little bit too much going on for its own good. Uh, the V8, however, it, it works perfectly. I like how the switches are naturally uh, blended in with the exhaust pipes. Absolutely one of my favourite vehicles in this set. Another audacious choice, but a bold one for sure. Unfortunately, the tanker segment of this particular model has been subject to some nasty discolouring over time and now appears a sort of creamy colour. Uh, and I do think it's a shame that scale-wise this model doesn't sit well with the other vehicles in the set, but then if this thing was much bigger, it would have been a mighty tricky fit on the display shelf. I'm nonetheless super impressed with the detail on something as small as this, though. Urgh, I, I don't know, I guess I'd rather they make the head of the thing bigger so it scales up with the other vehicles and just not bother with the tank a bit. Ah, well, I guess it fits in well with the Sunbeam and the Toyota all the same. Okay, into the Brosnan era now with the BMW Z3. This is quite possibly the only thing in the set to actually improve upon the car from the film on which the toy is based, in that we actually get to see some frigging stinger missiles on this thing. Uh, this is another of my absolute favourites in this set. It's a super lovely colour, nice detail, has a great gadget, albeit a frustrating one at times. Does anyone else have this problem? Like... One of the missiles has a tendency to get stuck behind one of the headlights for me, which is slightly aggravating. Damn my large man fingers! The trend of excellent Brosnan vehicle models continues with the BMW 750i L, suitably one of the chunkier toys in the set. It looks incredible. I've said before how I kind of like how this car isn't necessarily a sports car. It's a splendid vehicle, sure, but it could just easily be a fairly well-to-do middle-class family car. It's a five-door, for goodness sake. But I like it for that very reason. The gadget is great. Missiles popping up from the roof, yay. I think the blacked out windows help the look of this particular toy too. I'm guessing it's so we don't see the storage space inside the toy where the missiles are probably stored. Um, but it actually makes the car look even cooler. Uh, another firm favorite. Ah, the Z8, the often overlooked Brosnan Bond car. The unfortunate middle child. This model is fine and nice and accurate and everything, but by Kananga, the gadget is lame. How could missiles ever be lame? Well, these ones sure are. I mean, look at that. It's like they just ran out of effort entirely. Do they even look anything like missiles? Some detail would have been appreciated. Oh well, the disappointment over, here we have my very favourite model in the entire set, the at that time most recent one vehicle, the Aston Martin Vanquish. The quality of this particular toy feels to be a, a real step up from the rest of the set, like they anticipated this one would be the, well, most anticipated, and went all out with it. It feels significantly heavier than the others, I'm guessing this is because it's made of sturdier, more durable material. It certainly has the nicest paint job of the lot, absolutely beautiful metallic silver, detail is superb, gadget is rather swell too, missiles pop out of the grill, and an extra bit of apparatus is included to pop them back into place. Be great if they included that feature in the film and Bond kept having to park up on the ice and go out with this big spade thing to reload the car. I, I, I absolutely love this toy. It's a really stunning end to the collection. Or is it? Yes, in a strange move, an Easter egg model was included in the set. Now, this wasn't featured on the backs of any of the other cars in the set, or any promotional material that I saw, which is interesting to say the least. Why release a toy in secret? It begs the question, is my set even complete, or were there more secret vehicles? A Citroen? A Moon Buggy? A fake Manta Ray? Anyway, this is um, another excellent end to the set. Zhao's Green Jaguar comes with a pop-out Gatling gun. This has the same premium quality feel as the Vanquish. I wish I could articulate why better, but it really does just feel like a step up in quality over the other toys. It's a beautiful colour and good to have another villain's car included as part of this set. I do have other Bond vehicle models and toys, of course, but this particular set has always been the one that I've enjoyed the most, probably because 1999 to 2002 was probably the height of my Bond fandom, and that's roughly the time this collection was released. It was fun seeing my collection grow week by week, and new cars would be added, scrambling around in the shops frantically to get the last few, uh, specifically the From Russia With Love truck, which was such a pain to find. I don't know if I'll have the 
disposable income for a while again to be able to collect such a vast set of merchandise as this, but for what I have, I'm very happy with, and as a kid, I loved displaying and playing with these toys. For ranking purposes, I'd say my top five models in this set are uh, in order the Vanquish, the V8, the Z3, the Double Decker Bus, and the Toyota, while dishonorable mentions would go to the Z8 and the DBS. So does anyone else out there have the same set, or uh, indeed a different set? Uh, feel free to send me a message on uh, Facebook, or tweet me a picture of your collection. I'm oh, always curious to know what other Bond fans have in their collection. Um, but that's it for now. I'm Calvin. Calvin Dyson. Saying so long for now, Bond fans.